Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So it was New Year's Day. We celebrated finally the end of the year 2020. For some people, it's such a huge relief. For many of us, especially as Christians, we just look forward to another year to look forward to God's many blessings in our lives. We take the good and the bad. We're, we as Christians are used to uh, so many variables that happen in life. God didn't promise us too much in this world, but he promised to be with us in spite of all the good and the bad. Uh, Christians are usually at their most resilient when things are going poorly. If we look at the history of the church, uh, the great martyrdoms uh, have led to uh, the experience of the greatest uh, lives of worship and witness to, to the Lord, where the martyrs uh, becoming saints uh, then go on to eternal glory crowned with the uh, crown of martyrdom and continually intercede for us before the Lamb of God in eternal paradise, which every one of us strive towards. Uh, the new year is full of hope and dreams for so many of us throughout the world, Christians, non-Christians, people of all kinds, but especially for Armenians, the new year brings with it uh, such a, a delight, joy, and anticipation of new life. And so uh, a number of years ago, our Catholicos, Karakin II, Supreme Patriarch and Catholicos of all Armenians, declared that on the beginning of the year in our churches throughout the world, uh, that we would celebrate the new year by the blessing of the pomegranate. What is the pomegranate? It's an amazing fruit that there are many people who you'll meet here in America who've never even tried it. They've never had it. I know it had uh, become quite popular recently where it was became known for its uh, high levels of antioxidants. And so people started to uh, market and produce uh, vi different variants of pomegranate juice uh, without even knowing too much about the fruit itself. Armenians uh, probably don't go uh, a month without thinking about pomegranates and we use them in our foods um, we have them on our tables at Christmas time at New Year and so on and so of course naturally in our home we have a pomegranate um, tomorrow Sunday January 3rd we will be having the Divine Liturgy the first one of the new year and because of this ridiculous pandemic that we're still stuck in although we see light at the end of the tunnel I'm gonna be unable to uh, meet and greet you to tomorrow on this first uh, Sunday of the new year uh, but you'll be blessed to know that um, our own uh, Deacon Timothy Osnavorian uh, will be celebrating um, at church tomorrow with you, uh, with us, and he will be offering the Jamer Kuchun, uh, the morning service, and the Jashu. Uh, and at the conclusion of that service, like all churches throughout the world, most of them have done it on January 1st, uh, but he will be offering a prayer uh, for the pomegranates. And when you come to church tomorrow, you'll be able to receive one of these uh, pomegranates. Look at the pomegranate. It's used, uh, I was going to say exclusively, but it's used often in a lot of Armenian art. And it has um, a, quite a history. And it's uh, full of, uh, it, it's, it's scattered throughout many of our legends of our people throughout time. Um, and in artwork and in also uh, at weddings rituals, the pomegranate as a design is used. Uh, it's also in the iconography. Sometimes you'll see icons of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden where uh, Jesus is commanding him to eat from the tree of life. And lo and behold, not an apple, but you'll see pomegranates uh, on that tree. Why? The pomegranate is red naturally, which can't help but remind us of the blood of Christ and his sacrifice and that, that uh, juice, uh, I'm sorry, that fruit that came from the tree of life. It's also round to show that it's universal. It's like the globe. It's like the earth. It holds all and everything that supports life. And so the pomegranate is a sign and a symbol. Of, of course, the pomegranate too is a sign and a symbol of fertility and everlasting life. Not only everlasting life, but a particular kind of everlasting life, the abundant life, the life in Christ. And so the pomegranate within it contains compartments, just like Jesus says, in my father's house, there are many chambers. And so it's also as much as a symbol of the sacrifice of Christ, of Christ himself, of the universe. These compartments remind us that the church is one, the church is holy, the church is unique, the church is universal. All the goodness of God and his people from all time are contained symbolically in this one fruit. And would you believe that everything, every life begins with a seed and it germinates and it sports, uh, it 
comes forth a new life. And so the pomegranate, in roundabout figures, on average, contains about, you guessed it, 365 seeds. That's kind of miraculous, and it's amazing that our forefathers saw the deep symbolism of the pomegranate. Finally, I just want to point out, you see the, uh, the uh, stem, which is where it attaches to the tree, uh, with what you know began with a flower, and the flower was fertilized, and it sprouted forth in a fruit, which is the pomegranate. Well, this uh, stem, it looks like a crown. In fact, it's called the crown of the pomegranate, and that crown reminds us naturally of, you can see from the tradition of our ancestors, that that crown symbolizes of the majesty, the royalty of Christ himself, and the universal kingdom of God encompassed and incorporated in his church, which is his body. So the new year begins together as one family in the body of Christ, glorifying, uh, you know, in anticipation of the birth and the incarnation, the manifestation of our Lord in the Bethlehem, in the, in the, um, uh, the manger in Bethlehem, and also uh, at his baptism in the River Jordan. So please join us in, in prayer and in welcoming this new year as we glorify God so that in the next couple of days we'll greet one another with a joyous greeting to say Christos Tsanav Yev Haitnetsav. God bless you. Happy New Year. Shavort Nordari.